Good morning. How are you today? <laughs> I'm well, thank you. Fantastic. Um, so just for reference, I work with Brad Albritton and he just took your class. Um, mm -hmm. So I have started creating a workflow on Drawio. Thank you for that, because that's a fantastic. It's um, cool, huh? It's a great tool. Yeah. So trying to uh, lay things out first. So coming up with a workflow for um, lead nurturing campaigns. I mean, excuse me, emails um, within the CRM. So mm -hmm. I yes. um, have created this Drawio and shared it with Brad, and he thought that I might have crossed over from a workflow to a blueprint. So I have the uh, workflow built out as, you know, emails. And if they do this, then this happens. Uh, another mm -hmm. email, you know, no action, just keep sending emails, just keep sending emails. But what I wanted to do, and this is where he wanted me to ask you, if they click more than once or twice, on emails, I want to initiate a task for the lead owner to reach out and make a call. Would that need to be in Blueprint or can I do all of this in Workflow? Great, great question. So first of all, let's identify why, what is a Blueprint and what is a Workflow. So a blueprint is anything that the user need to click and the user will be you or Brad. If you're clicking on something, that will be considered as a blueprint. A workflow will be something that's running in the background. For example, when an email comes in, we take action. Is that making sense? Yes. Okay. So... Here, for example, you're trying to automate based on an incoming email. That will mean that you need to run a workflow. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now, the workflow that you need to run, there is some uh, echo from the mic. Can you add, have some kind of headphones or a little bit mute the, the volume? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I okay. whispered, is that better? No, no, it's uh, I hear myself, but now now it's okay. Now it's better. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So in this case, I will create an email workflow. Okay. And that will be, let's say, count number of uh, clicks. Is that what, what you want to do? As many times or opens or what you want to track? I would like to. Let me, if, if I can go back just a second, because I'm not sure we're thinking the same thing. Sure, of course. Okay, so the workflow I want to create is a, ne a lead nurturing email drip mm -hmm. um, through CRM. And mm -hmm. so I just want to, you know, create a workflow where periodically they get emails. But if they do certain actions, which are, you know, clicks, are mm -hmm. the only thing we really want to move on. If they click on certain things, we would like for the owner to reach out. So are we on the same page or not? Yes. Okay. All right. Good. We are. Good. So first of all, if you go to leorisic.com, mm -hmm. you will see a free course mm -hmm. uh, that will show you exactly step-by-step -step how to create this drip campaign that you're talking about. And that's what I, I've already looked at. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's the one that it's, it's showing you the process. Yes. Yes. V very good. Now, second the of question all. question was just about creating a task for the owner. Um, Brad seemed to think that the workflow and the blueprint were crossing over, but I'm assuming you're saying that it could all be done in workflows. Yes. It, 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 okay. it, it, there is no other way. It must okay. be workflow. Okay. All right. So here, this guy... Mm -hmm. Is showing you how to send the emails. Mm -hmm. What you're interested in is in the response. Correct. Very good. Okay. I'm just trying to see that we are on the same page. Yes, yes. Okay. So let's say we have received emails. Will be the workflow. 
And then you have here some kind of a criteria when you want this workflow to trigger. And that will be whenever an email is received, unreplied, opened, and unreplied. In our case, it will be received, right? Yes. Okay. Now, we have here, would you like to set a condition for the email fields? Yes. And um, let's see. I'm pretty sure I have a way to trigger based on clicks. Let's see if I can do something here. No, it looks like you cannot do it. I thought that you can run a workflow based on clicks. Right. That's but it's the problem. only based on received. That's the problem. Nah. Okay. I thought I can do it. Uh, one thing that maybe as a workaround, you have the automation section and you have there the scoring rules. Yes. Are you using it? Um, that is the next step. We're going to begin to score our leads. Yes. So probably here you want to have, for example, if the email was opened, let's say you give it one point. If it clicked, you give it 10 points. And in gotcha. that case, you start to see if you have, for example, more than 20, which you need to have or 20 opens or two clicks, then basically you can you can uh, set an automation based on the scoring rules. Okay. So it goes like that. You have here, let's call it test. And the trigger will be based on score. Gotcha. So when the score increased, okay, and that will be uh, the score. I don't have it here, but when you have the score, right. let's say twenty, then then you uh, then you run it. Okay. All okay. Right. So That's right. So get the scoring rules uh, in place. Yes, scoring. Create rules. the workflow for the drips. And then create a workflow for if if then basically mm -hmm. for if the score is this then click off kick off this workflow. Okay, all right, gotcha. Okay, that, that's probably where I would go. Okay, all okay. right, sounds Perfect. good. I have one more question that did not get answered last week. Sure. Um, um, about the new email user interface in CRM, um, I still have not seen that. We haven't seen that. Is that um, available? How do I go about getting that? So you um, mean uh, this thing that's popping up here? Yeah. I mean, the new user interface where you can save a draft and go back. Um, I don't. We don't have that. Ours okay. is still the old. How do we get the new? So it's or you send an email to Zo support and you ask them for the new interface, or if we are your Zo partner, just send me or or Carol send us an email and we will take care of it for you. Okay, I don't okay. think we're technically a partner, so I guess I'll just hit Zoho support. Yeah, that that will be great, and they can help you. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you Perfect. so much. Thank Have you. a great day. You too. Bye bye, Mr. Edian. Hello, Leo. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. Very good. Um, so the question is, um, so I have a, a blueprint where I can click the blueprint transition and this sends my account, or I like to call them companies, um, a form, an email with a form. Then mm -hmm. this form is pre-populated with information that I have on the record mm -hmm. and they can then uh, update this and uh, send it back. Now, under Zoho Forms, I can say who must receive this notification. I can put in different users, but I can't say the record owner. So That's right. Then, so if I've got five or six people and I want the person who handles that account, who's the record owner, to get notification, um, how can I do this? Because in Forms, I don't have the possibility to do this. Yes, you are, you are correct. There is always a workaround. <laughs> so so um, let's find a solution without coding. Okay, so I have something. 
So we are usually doing it with coding. So we're sending the user ID from the form, which is just a text. And whenever it's being received in CRM with a workflow, we just assign it based on the ID. So this is what we're doing. If you don't want to have, okay. uh, if you don't want to have a, a code, which uh, I think that you don't want to have code, you're going to create here a new field, let's say pick list, and you call it users. And you have your Brad, John, whatever. Okay. And give you okay. Okay. In your form, you're going to have um, you're going to have on your form an Eden field, and the Eden field will say, for example, John. And you know that that specific form should go to John. Is that making yes. sense? Yes, that makes sense. In the integration, you connect John. Basically, you connect your user from your form to the user with CRM. Yeah. OK, so it will be something like that. We we'll call it user. Default value will be John mandatory field and Eden. So no one sees this form, this uh, field. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you also create one workflow on CRM. And the workflow will be when the form, basically when this field is being sent, when you know that there is a new form being sent, you check if the user is John, then you change the ownership to John. I it's good understand. for small companies. If you have like few users, you have few workflows and it's fine. Or one workflow with multiple conditions. Yeah, now that makes sense. Okay. Is that answering the question, uh, Edwin? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And if you have to code it, would that be with a custom function? Yeah, it's a very small function. It's a few minutes. It's uh, You're just checking if, if the ID... It's not if, when the ID comes in. So let's see, for example, when you go to the user system and you click on a user, you have here a variable of the ID. Yeah. So we grab this ID, we push it into the form. So it will look something like that. Yeah. And when the record coming in to the CRM, we are checking if this specific record, so let's say you have something like that, or yeah. And whenever it's coming, the, the form is being sent, it's pre-populating the user ID with this number. And based on that, we're assigning the record to this user. And that's it. It's a very, very small yeah, function. That, yeah, that, that makes sense. So that might be a better way. And then I suppose another way is to check any update on a record. And if a record's updated, to send a notification to the record owner. But then you could get other notifications each time it changes, I guess. Yeah, that will be painful. I yeah, prefer I in general so. not to get too many notifications. I prefer to have quality views. And the views will show me what's happening in a day or record that needs my attention, something like that. But I, I prefer to have quality views than sending emails and notifications. People are already overwhelmed with way too many notifications, right? I agree 100%. That uh, is a problem. <laughs> Get too many. Um, just had a second following question, and this is a, a, a client of ours who I introduced to Zoho, and they're very happy, but their uh, holding company doesn't want to, for their emails, add a DKIM and the SPF record to their mm -hmm. main domain. So they want to create a subdomain, um, call it news.themaindomain.com, and use that rather where they can put DKIM and SPF. So they're scared that they're going to um, 
affect their DNS by having this, the, these records in their main domain and open it up to possible hacking and, and so on. So I don't think that's correct, but uh, that's what they believe. Is it possible to um, change the account to a, a subdomain um, and use that rather? Probably. I never did it, but I don't see a problem. Why not? Because uh, the as long as you have the domain itself, you can set SPF and DKIM also to subdomains. So I, I don't see a problem with it. I don't okay. know how to right. do it, and I never did it, but I don't see a problem. It's just records. All right. No, it's just, uh, you know, it's just out of interest. All right, that answers my questions. Thank you, Leo. It's always great. Okay. Thank you, my friend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cheers, then. Cheers. Hello, Michael. Hi there, Leo. Hi. Hello, how are you? Fantastic, thank you. And again, thank you for the help so far. It's been no, pr no problem. So, so tell me what's going on. Yeah, so I, I created the second company as I spoke to you about, and so one, and then you try to set up the email, and mm -hmm. in that process, it uh, it asks you to verify your cell phone Telephone. number. And you, Yes. And it tells you that it's used in a different account. Yeah, this is this is where it's uh, great to have kids. So ah. I'm using their cell phones. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you've got the same problem, right? Everyone have the same problem. <laughs> they they don't want the people to spam. So they want to have some kind of a phone number assigned to it. And the phone is unique. So you're getting stuck. Uh, I'm using my kids, my wife, <laughs> friends. <Yeah. laughs> I'm using everyone I can. So. Okay. Yeah. No, I got you, got you. And then yeah. at, at the last point, I, I created my first function. And, and in the when you say click, save, and execute, I, mm -hmm. I get the right results if I type in the record ID and I, and I run it. But if I put it part of a workflow, it, it doesn't run. So wait, what, what are you trying to do? So you have you have a, you want to create a workflow that triggers a function. Okay, no problem. So let's so, create here some kind of a workflow. Yeah. Okay. So so and, and the, the function is working because I've I've tested it. Okay. You know, in the uh, where you create the, the function, it just doesn't seem to call it. Let's create something. Let's see. Okay, so you have here some kind of a function, okay? Yep, yep. Very good. Mm -hmm. And when you finish, you click on save. So, so yeah, I have done that, but then I, if I've clicked on save and execute it, it prompts me for the record ID and some Because you have field. it in the arguments. Yes, correct. That's fine. If, if you test it and it works, just click on save on the right side. I've done that. And then click save here. I've done that. So it's working. If it's when not it, working, it means your your conditions in the workflow are not good. So I've, I've, I've added a task to my instant actions, and it, it performs a task, and then it doesn't do anything with the function. So you have a task and the function. Yeah. So I need to see task. it. If, do you have live information on this system? Uh, yeah, but I use an indicator in the record to... Um... No, I wanted to see if I can share your screen right now, but uh, if you have live information of real people, so probably you don't mm -hmm. want to do it. Yeah, yeah, but but that's that's the issue. Or, okay. or the workflow or the condition, one of them. Thank you. Okay, thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye. So in the invoice, I think that the question is if we can have different type of or different terms of and conditions for different invoices. And meanwhile, I can show you that uh, you can have a different templates. Um, I don't know if each template is using different terms and conditions. I don't think so, actually. Hmm. I don't think so. So I don't. I don't know if you can have different uh, terms of and conditions 
that are predefined for different scenarios. What I can tell you is that you can create some kind of a workflow in books that will do the magic. For example, uh, set uh, terms of use one. And that will be for the invoice. Let's see if that will work. I'm just trying to be creative. I'm not sure even if it will work. And that will be an event based. And when uh, an invoice, for example, is created or edited and work run this uh, workflow, when any field is updated, and the condition will be, I don't know how you differentiate between your different uh, templates, but let's just take uh, based on amount, just so I can uh, show you how it works. So not percentage. Oh. Nah, let's do your best on the first name. That will be easy. Okay, so if first name is Lior, uh, then uh, where is it? Uh, just once. Yeah, so just once. And let's see if I can give you the terms. Field update. Terms one. Terms and conditions will be okay. So basically, what I did here, um, I have some kind of a condition. So here you can see I have a, a condition that is working on the invoice module. Whenever something is happening, and here you will have how you like to differentiate between terms and condition one and terms and condition two. So you will have here the right, uh, the right condition. It might be based on amount, percentage, company name. I, again, I don't know exactly the use case for you. And when this is happening, it will update the terms and condition to something, okay? And that probably would be a workaround to what you're trying to achieve. So I hope I was able to help you here. Let's check your questions. You have just uh, advertised new Zooform course. If I have already enrolled to the old Zooforms course, do I still have to pay to enroll to the new Zooform course? So the new Zooforms course that I created is a, a bit different than the previous one. So this is the one. People that uh, purchase the old Zooform course, um, if it's, I think, more than three months ago, uh, they can buy this one for 50% discount. If they bought the course in the, in the last three months, they will get this course for free. And uh, for existing clients that bought Zo CRM course or my other courses, they're getting 35% off. So... Just shoot me an email and I can I can take care of it, me or, or Carol. So I hope I was able to answer the question here. Abdul Karim? Yes, yes, yes. How are you, sir? All good, all good at the hotel. Everything is good, thank you. Good, thank you. So talk to me. What's going on with yeah, the deals? Yeah. Yeah, so no, it's uh, after you close the deals, uh, we have the onboarding team, okay? Because when the deal is closed, each company have a long uh, verification and onboarding process, okay? Which requires a lot of uh, uh, task and transition. Currently, we're doing it on the uh, Zoho or Castly. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Castly, yes. so it's working good, but the issue is that uh, everything is duplicated and there is no one source of data. So... What we are exploring with the team is that we'll, we'll shift this to be done in the Zoho CRM. So after closing the deal, we can create a new module 
for uh, verifying the account and so on. So all, also not only the sales team will be using the CRM, also the account managers and uh, customer success team and so on. So just the concept, what do you think? Is it a right move or not? Very, very right. So the way I see it is when you have, for example, a close one, so now you have the deal is close one, we mm -hmm. can automatically initiate something like that. Uh, where are my tasks? Uh, it's not this. Yeah, it is the system. Yeah. So whenever you have a task, a, a deal close one, we automatically can create some kind of a, a ta small task system in the CRM. And then your team will need to work with it step by step. The, the upside of working based on the blueprint in CRM is that you have your account connected, activities connected, the emails, the notes, attachments, so work drive, it's all connected. You will not have duplicates, it will be flawless. And also when, for example, you click, for example, on close task, we can initiate a timesheet to Zoho books. So you can have cool automations that's, making sure that your process is tight. So I, I think that going with Zoho CRM for a very small project management system is the right way. I it's like it a lot. And you think it's better than Orchestly, right? Orchestly as a, as, a, as a concept is great. My problem with it, it's not really connecting to anything. It's like a standalone product. Exactly. Yeah. That's why we're shifting back. Yeah. Yes, okay. I think um, if you have all the data in CRM and you have the contacts and the accounts and the, the communications and the meetings and the tasks, it's all in one place. And now Orchestra becoming another source of data. Yes. Uh, it's a problem. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so this, Yanni, this will be the, because you, you remember we have done our meeting, so inshallah when we sign with you, this will be the first project we will work with, just uh, to, to let you know. So after that, yeah. we'll go back to the uh, the CRM. So we'll start with this project. Thank you, yeah. thank you for your No, No problem, my friend. Have a beautiful day. Mr. Jordan, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very good. How are you today? Doing well. So we wanted to have a Zoho sign template and we wanted the user to populate certain data within the template. What we ended up doing is using a form to feed the template, but I was wondering, is there a way to extract the data from the template itself? To extract the data from a Zoho sign template? Exactly. So where you could set up fields on, the, on a template and give them uh, attribute names or variable names. I, I didn't see any place where you can export no. that data and see a list of what they populated. No, with the there is no database behind Zoho sign. Okay. So it's really just you just put the information and it's just displaying it to you. So would you recommend the approach we took where they fill out a Zoho form, it redirects to the sign template populating using the prefill? That gets pushed. The form gets pushed to the te uh, the document, the Excel mm -hmm. or the sheet, and then they sign. Yeah, that that's what we do. Also, we we request the user to provide information. We combine it usually with existing information that we already have from the system. Send it for Zoho sign. Sending it for the client for signature. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, awesome. Okay. Any other question, my friend? No. Uh, I mean, it was just looking to see if we can make that approach more efficient, but it, we have it working with we're using Flow for managing the capture of the sign. I guess one, one challenge we had was we use the redirect to sign. Mm -hmm. and okay. Is there any way to capture, or I guess, yeah, what's the best way to capture which form went into which signed document to track whether they signed it or not? Mm, you're doing it with Zoho Flow, right? Yeah. So you can have a flow 
that the trigger will be, let me show you. I think I have a, a flow like that ready from the automation workflow workshop. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this guy. So you have the trigger that is based you have the trigger that is based on if the document was signed. Yeah. Okay. Based on that, you have a condition that is a... Oh, one second, let me open it. You have a condition based on the document or the email template, the signed template that you want to track because you have many and this is just one of them. In this case, I am checking that the template is NDA. Then I'm fetching the lead or the contact based on the email address that was provided from the Zoho sign. And then I am updating the record with whatever you want to update. In my case, I think it's here, it's a signed yes, no, something like that. Okay, beautiful. And is there a way to push the signed document into CRM in your case or into whatever, into work drive is ideal for us? Yes, you can. I don't know if you can do it with flow, but you can do it with code for sure. But okay, uh, yeah. ch ch check it out if you can do it with the, uh, if you can do it like that. I'm pretty sure that you have as, as part of the variables that you're getting here. I am pretty sure that you also have the document. Uh, I'm not sure. I never tried it because I'm not doing it with Zoho flow, but I'm pretty sure that one of them will be the, the document. Okay. All right. Document ID. Yeah. Uh, maybe okay. signed or signed order, self sign. Just just play with it. But th there is a way to retrieve it. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. I am using phone bridge to video for my sales rep to contact prospects and contacts. It's very good on desktop, but doesn't seem to work on Zosier and mobile app. As my sales rep are often on the go, it creates a lot of problem. Any solutions? Um, very good question. It's a very common problem with uh, all the Zoho applications and S uh, SMS and phone to have a bridge between the desktop and the mobile. The Zoho CRM mobile application is not supporting any of those uh, plugins. And I don't even think in the future it's going to do it because every plugin has its own way to function. So I don't really see how it's going to work. In general, I understand that some people are on the go, but as someone that already been through multiple businesses and I own many businesses that salespeople had to be on the go and, con and communicate with people, I didn't let them do it. The reason is that when we were going over recordings once a week to see how the salespeople perform, the feeling that you get as a consumer, that you talk to the sales guy on the other side and you have noise from traffic or you know, you're driving and you, you hear that the salesperson is distracted and not with you, the the feeling that you get as a consumer is shit. It's not good. So uh, I think that we can take the restriction that Zoe is giving us, which means you cannot have phone calls from your mobile. You need to be sitting in front of a computer and operate. I think we can take it as a, as a, as a positive thing and upgrade our customer service, our sales level, and I'm pretty positive that you will see also that you're getting more sales out of it. So the problem is there. You cannot have the phone and SMS on your phone. But 
I would probably take it to the other side and just force my team to work on uh, on desktop and mobile, uh, on desktop, sorry, and and check if the conversions goes up. And you will see that they are going up. Uh, I, I saw it in my businesses anyway, that conversions went up dramatically when we were on desktop. So I'd like to know, so the, the screen that comes up, you know, after a call is completed to log the call, where can we uh, customize that screen for questions that we want answered? Which plugin are you talking about? Every plugin is totally different. Uh, I thought this one was the one that was native with Zoho. So we used uh, Twilio. Yes, uh, I don't really know. Most well, you of know another one is fine. We can switch, but we'd like to be able to program it. Um, the I, I'm personally using uh, uh, you know, not not the ones that Zoho are giving for free because they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. I prefer that my um, my dialer will give me some information. For example, when someone calls, I need to see immediately what was the last note on file. Mm -hmm. I, I need to see the person name, the company, if they are a VIP customer or not, if I'm tagged or not, if it's a sales call or not. So I have, I have lots of stuff that I am looking to get with the integration. So this okay. is why I don't really use the, the, the Zoho one, which is only a dialer. Okay. Uh, so you're using you're using that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't have an answer for you. I don't know, but you can check with Zo support and just see with them if if there is a way to to do it. I doubt that you have a way to do anything with it. Okay. So I I I just I didn't know that it was a function. I I, I didn't know that we could buy something that would customize it better. Could you tell us what you use? I, I will send you an email uh, okay. after that with with some options. Okay. I just I I just need to see what's what's available for your specific case, and I will send you something. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No no problem. And the question is, what do we do with a sales opportunity after it has been closed? One. A very very good question. So usually we are talking when we have deals. We're talking what happened all the way from the beginning of the process all the way to close one or close lost. But after close one and close lost, you you might do lots of cool stuff. Uh, for example, in the case of uh, Abdul Karim that uh, he was uh, uh, talking here before uh, this question. In his case, when it's close one, the process just begins from that point. And from here, we need to initiate some kind of a project. Now, in my company, it's also the same case. Whenever I have a close one, I just need to start meeting the client and, uh, and create an architecture to the system, assign it to developers, project manager, making sure that the client is getting what he needs. So a uh, few things can happen here. It's all that you have an internal Zoho CRM module that is taking care of that. Uh, some clients of ours, the close one is just part of the process. And after that, you have more stages to handle the project. So imagine the pipeline number one. And let me take you to the pipelines for the people that don't know what I'm talking about. So you will have pipeline number one, and that will be, let's say, the sale. Pipeline number two will be initiation or starting work to work on the project. So each pipeline will, will do its own work to continue the process of this deal until completion. Is that is that making sense, Chris? It's making sense, yes. Thank you. Um, but does it ever come off of the uh, sales opportunity list? Will it move to a different list at some point? No, you don't. You don't usually move it. If when if you completed, will it archive? Oh, the, the the thing with archive. So if you're looking right now and you see all the deals, 
you see here all the deals with all the different stages. For example, I have here a few, a few deals. Mm -hmm. uh, five of them will be closed one and two of them as no stage at all, or maybe a uh, qualification or something else. You can create a view and this view will show you all the open deals. And the criteria will be that you have stage is not, not close one, not close lost, and not close to competition. And now, if you look at it, you will see only two deals that are making sense for you. I see. Is that making sense? Yes. So they never really come off of the sales opportunities, just how you're viewing them. That's right. You want to keep everything in the database locked. Uh, we can also use, uh, for example, the My Today's follow-ups. And My Today's follow-ups is working not only on the stage of the opportunity. There is also here, there is a small section that we created that is a follow-up date. When is the next time that I need to talk to this person? Now, imagine that you have a deal but the person just told you that he don't want to meet with you today. He is going to Spain and he's coming back on May 30th. In that case, when I'm looking at my deals, I don't want to see this deal. I have nothing to do with it. So now it's just clouding the, I, I need clarity on, on what I need to execute today. And obviously the other deal is not here until end of next month. Right. So. Uh, we created here some rules and you can copy that. So you have basically the follow-up date is today or until yesterday. So that's catching everything from today and backwards. And the stage basically is open and the deal owner is the logged in user. So I can see only the deals that are relevant to me and not to someone else. Okay, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, that helps a lot. Thank you. Thanks. No problem. Okay, so guys, thank you very much for, for joining me today. Um, check Zo Sales IQ version 2. I think it's cool. It opens lots of cool things uh, for the future. So I think it's interesting. Thank you very much for watching me today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.